guys, thanks for tuning in to this video on how to use the laser cutter for various projects, either engraving or cutting into materials. Um, I wanted to just show you a picture of what the laser itself looks like and kind of go over a few of the different parts. All right, so I've changed my perspective to a top-down view of the machine itself. So that is the bed that we're looking at. Um, the infrared beam itself is coming out of that cone um, shape thing down in there which we'll go over later. Over on the right here, we've got what's called the control panel. This is used to uh, either autofocus materials that are on the bed um, or jog the machine. And there's an emergency stop button that if you hit that, that shuts the whole machine off. Uh, to the right of that, you'll see a little venting um, system. So anything that is cut or carved um, does produce smoke and will um, be vented out through the top of the building. Then to the left here, uh, we have what's called an industrial chiller. That's the thing that actually keeps the CO2 tube cooled um, when the machine is running. Um, this thing right here is called the air assist control. We have a high volume or low volume air assist, and that is essentially just high pressure or low pressure air that's used um, for either engraving or cutting operations. Generally, the high volume air assist is used for cutting through materials, and the low volume is used for engraving. All right, so this is a view from the back of the machine. That is the CO2 tube that is located in the back. Um, and that is where the infrared beam is created once the machine turns on and power goes through it and um, reacts with all of the gases in that CO2 tube. And then it shoots off into several mirrors and then out the nozzle onto the bed, onto whatever material you are cutting or engraving into. Okay, so this is a view of what the laser looks like inside. Uh, this is the laser bed. This is the nozzle that the infrared beam shoots out of. Um, there is a thing called a focus lens in here that helps focus the infrared beam into the material that you're either cutting or engraving into. Um, this is the air assist tube, so this is where the the high um, pressure or low pressure air is going to be coming out of and um, basically goes through here and uh, gets shot out around this, the same area that the uh, infrared beam is coming out of. Also notice this is basically, this is set up on a gantry system so it's kind of much like a CNC router or a 3D printer in terms of it that it goes X, Y and then, um, or X, Y and then the bed itself um, can go downwards depending on um, the material that you're using to uh, either engrave or cut into. So just to give you an idea of um, how all of this works. So essentially, let me move the camera over here. Um, you can see that little hole back here. Um, essentially what happens is when the CO2 laser is engaged, uh, there's um, high power electricity goes through the tube and that basically that process creates an infrared beam. And basically the beam gets shot out from the back one end of the tube and it hits a mirror that's back behind that little um, hole back there. And then this is actually another mirror that the infrared beam hits. So then after it hits that mirror, it comes all the way over here and hits a mirror right here. And then the mirror actually ends up making the infrared beam shoot down through there. And then it um, either hits the material that you're engraving or cutting onto. Here's an example of um, what the material would look like set down in the uh, laser bed area. Um, this is a piece of aluminum 6061, and I used, um, in order to mark it, I used this, it's called this laser marking spray by this company in Duramark. So basically I sprayed this onto the aluminum itself, and then uh, during the process of the marking, uh, essentially there's a, like a chemical bonding that happens between the spray itself and then the, the material, the aluminum. So it makes this kind of um, light mark onto the material. So with things like um, aluminum, Aluminum 6061 or other particular metals that this might be able to mark on. Um, it can mark into things, but it actually can't cut into them. It's just not powerful enough of a laser to do that. This is a 60 watt laser, and essentially the wattage means um, 
has a correlation to the amount of or the thickness of material that it can cut through. So it can cut through, um, you know, this piece of acrylic and this piece of thin plywood. Um, just looking at the Thunder Laser, uh, a printout I did of the cutting parameters, the max thickness of acrylic it could cut through is 10 millimeters, and the max thickness of plywood is 4.5 millimeters. So it can't really cut too deep through um, many materials, but um, you know, as long as you have it, as long as it's thin enough, it should be able to cut through it. And I'll, I'll include a link um, with the video um, to the materials that uh, a PDF of the materials that this can cut and engrave into. All right, so I figured before we actually do a couple of test projects on the laser, uh, we should go over the interface of the software that runs. The laser itself where you set up um, projects and then you can actually run the job from the software itself uh, via USB and it goes to the laser. Um, it, this is called Lightburn um, and uh, it's really awesome. I've been playing with it the last couple of months and there's a lot of really cool options for either creating your own designs or importing things like um, JPEG pictures or if you've ever used a scalable vector graphic file also known as an SVG file. It really likes SVG files uh, in terms of being able to um, cut or etch or engrave um, those images. So to start off, uh, in Lightburn, you'll notice here on the left side, essentially this area is where you can start drawing some shapes. This is a selection tool. Right here you have a drawing, like a pencil drawing lines tool, so if you click that, you can actually start clicking around and making a little shape like that. Then you've also got this um, re rectangle tool, a ellipse tool, a re regular polygon tool, as well as this thing, thing called L edit nodes. So with the edit nodes tool, basically you want to highlight the shape that you want to edit, and then you will click on the edit nodes tool, and you'll see all the parts that um, I clicked to make this design. These are called nodes, and with um, scalable vector graphics files that you'd create in uh, Adobe Illustrator, or the other option is Inkscape, which is a free open source vector graphic editor. Um, the the main concept behind uh, scalable vector graphics files is that compared to JPEGs um, and like PNG files, uh, scalable vector graphics files use these things called nodes, which are really handy for editing and um, keeping proportionality for your images. Um, whereas like a JPEG picture uses pixels um, and doesn't really quite work super well with the laser um, cutter for like cutting out shapes. It can certainly engrave. Uh, JPEG files that you import into this software, but um, for anything else, uh, these handy tools right here for creating shapes in here or using different software, uh, vector uh, editing software will really be beneficial for creating your own designs uh, to have the laser either cut or etch into different materials. So moving along in Lightburn, uh, you also have some other options down here. One of them is the Create Edit Text Tool. So if you click on that, um, you're going to be able to add text to your project file. So whatever sort of material that you want to cut or engrave into, uh, you can use this text tool to add text to it. Um, and it will be basically fonts that are on um, installed on the, the Windows PC that's connected to the, to the uh, laser itself. Um, you also have an option to set the laser position by clicking on the page. So if you click on this and you clicked anywhere on here, you could actually set the position of the laser head. It would go to that uh, position. Um, there's also a measurement tool. And then there's these options down here. Um, basically it's to uh, change or modify um, parts of the shapes that you create up here. Um, on this page. So I'll just show you an example of the, say, the offset shapes tool. I'm going to grab this rectangle right here, click over there like that, go back to the selection tool right there, and then I'm going to choose the offset tool right there. And you'll act, what, you, what you'll see is that um, it's going to create an offset from that original shape. You can either do it outwards, so that's the original shape. The offset is going up, and it's an offset distance, I think, of 10. That might be 10 millimeters, I believe. Um, you can choose to offset it inward from the shape, or you can actually do an offset on both. You can change the um, corner styles and stuff as well, and these other options, which I haven't played with. But um, we'll just see what this looks like. I'll click on OK, 
And as you can see now, uh, there is a shape offset from this going outward and then one going inward. And if we click up here on the preview right there, we can see what that's going to look like. Um, the colors aren't actually going to matter in terms of, uh, you know, what you, it's not going to create this red right there. That just basically means that this, um, using what's called the fill mode, and I'll go over that in a moment, that's going to basically engrave uh, this shape like that right there, and then engrave this um, other square inside. And this should likely, I believe, be left blank, this space right there. And while we're at it with this shape, it is probably good to go over the, um, over here, it's called cuts and layers. Um, and this essentially, this is where you choose um, what kind of uh, operation the laser is gonna take. So right now it was set to a fill mode, which basically it's like an engraving setting. If you have anything set to fill, it's basically going to etch or engrave onto the surface of whatever material you have um, being lasered. If you click over to the line tool, this is basically like a, um, it's a line operation, but it's also used to cut through material itself. So we just changed this from fill to line and we can look up here to the preview, which is super handy, click on that. And you'll see now that it's just going to basically create lines or etch, essentially engrave lines um, onto the material itself. And it's gonna take an estimated time of uh, eight seconds to do that. So one thing to note too um, that I've been learning is that uh, with the different modes, essentially like if you have a logo or something that you want to engrave on a piece of say plywood, you'd first use the fill tool for your image and then you would create another layer, which layers are down here. So I create a layer by clicking on this and I'm gonna say, let's say I want to have this image be engraved, but also um, the last thing that I want to do is say if I have a square piece of plywood, I want to actually have a circle um, cut out of this shape. Um, and I'll show you what I mean with that. So hypothetically, let's say, you know, you want this shape engraved. And then the last thing that we want to do is say we have a piece of plywood that's about that big. We basically want the last operation to be a line um, operation so basically it's going to be cutting all the way through the material say the plywood um, to create this circular shape out of the stock uh, square material and i'll show you what that looks like in just a second so this is a preview of what it would look like I'll click right there um, and as you can see it's going to first engrave and then the last thing it's going to do is cut cut the shape out of the stock material um, and that's the layers, um, the, it does go in order. So the first thing it's going to do is engrave that shape. And then the next, the last thing that we'll do, we'll cut that shape out. And I'll show you real quick, just with some text to kind of make it easier to understand. So I'm going to highlight these and just click delete. I'll do my text tool, click right there. I'm going to just type in MPL from Missoula Public Library. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna move this just around real quick. And we can get a preview of what that's going to look like. So that's also going to be a line cut right there. So the one thing I just realized I forgot to do is I'm gonna do Control Z and I actually want the uh, text itself to be engraved. So that's gonna be a different layer. So I'm gonna click back to the zero, zero layer right there and choose the text tool. Click right there, type in MPL. Grab this selection tool right there. And now what I wanna do is actually change the uh, position of this. So it's engraving starts first and then the cutting out of the shape happens after that. So what you can do is go over here and change, click this to move the selected layer out. So we'll click a preview of this and so as you can see, it's gonna take a minute and 42 seconds to first, it's going to engrave MPL, and then it's actually gonna cut that shape out of, say, if the stock material, the plywood, thin plywood was like a square like this, um, the whole uh, total time of the job would only be a minute and 42 seconds. 
And so one thing to note is that um, with these modes, and I've really only used line and fill, I haven't used the fill and line or offset fill. That's something um, we can always play around with once we're open um, to the public end. Um, if that's something you want to explore uh, working on uh, projects with a laser. But anyhow, um, using the line and fill uh, methods, essentially you'll notice there's these, it says speed and power. So with fill, which essentially is an engraving operation, you can actually increase your speed pretty high, but you actually want your power to be um, not as high. You don't want it at 100%. You want it sort of in a, and it, it depends on the material that you're engraving in, but values from like 10 to 20% um, percent or 30% power. Um, that's essentially because when you're engraving on a piece of material, you're just kind of basically the uh, CO2 laser is burning into it using the infrared beam. So it's burning into that material, but it's not burning all the way through. And if you increased the power of this um, engraving, essentially when you increase the power, that uh, increases the depth of the um, engraving onto the, the surface. So you can play around with those settings, but I found that if you want just kind of a nice light engraving on say a piece of plywood, um, you don't want to go too high with your power settings because you are going to just kind of essentially burn through the material itself. Um, so depending on your project, those are values that you can play around with. Um, speed you can keep at a higher value because it's essentially just engraving. It's not doing any sort of cutting uh, into the material. Now with the line mode, and that's specifically, you know, I from what I've learned and what I've used the machine for, line mode is specifically you want to use that for actually when you're cutting through a, a piece of material. Um, and you'll actually notice that the speed you know, is much lower, but the power is higher. So essentially when you use the line command to cut through materials, you want your speed to go slower, but you want your power to increase to a higher value in order to uh, increase the, the depth that the um, laser itself can cut into the material. You also see up here, you've got these options. So the output value just means that it enables or disables sending this layer to the laser. And the show value right there enables or disables showing this layer in the edit window. Right over here though, this enables what's called air assist. Uh, essentially, um, and I'll show you this when we do our uh, walkthrough of the first projects that we're gonna do with a laser. But the air assist is, um, it's compressed air that comes through a tube and gets um, pushed onto or like to the side of the laser head itself. And essentially when you're doing engraving, we can turn this off and that just means we're not totally um, turning off the air assist. It's just going to be shooting out a lighter stream of air and essentially you want that with engraving. All the things that I've kind of read about with engraving, you want the air assist to be um, at a, the low value. Whereas when you're uh, actually cutting through material itself uh, using the line mode, you actually want air assist on, which will basically shoot a higher um, st strain of air onto the material itself. And you basically want that to happen with things like uh, cutting through plywood to prevent what's called flare-ups, which is basically like little flames um, that are created when the material is getting cut, just because the uh, infrared, infrared laser is um, running at a really high um, temperature value. So you always wanna make sure when you're cutting through material, such as you know plywood or acrylic or whatever, um, to use when you're using the line mode, you actually want the air assist to be on, which just basically means it's gonna, gonna be at, at its high stage. Whereas um, engraving, you just wanna turn this off to turn, basically turn the machine onto a low stage air assist, which essentially is just, not, it's not blowing as much air um, out onto uh, where the, the nozzle is um, shooting at the laser. So now we can move along to these other options down here. These are basically um, things that you can use to change elements of your design. So this tool right there, it's to weld all selected shapes together. This offers you the option to do a union of two different shapes. This one does uh, a subtraction of one shape from another. And this actually can uh, use this tool to intersect two shapes. So say, I'll just do an example of one of them say we have this thing like that 
and what we want to do is try to do a union uh, the, or weld those shapes together. Um, so I'm going to select that shape and then clicking shift on my keyboard and then clicking on that shape. I click there and see what that looks like. So we're welding it together so it's actually adding that shape, fusing it to that bigger shape. I'm going to do control Z. We'll try out um, the Boolean union and see if that uh, does anything different. So I'm going to hold shift, click on that element, click on this element, do a union. It basically did the same thing. Um, but what we could try is doing this Boolean intersect, or actually let's do a Boolean difference and see what that does. As you can see, it actually um, got rid of that larger circular shape and uh, we cut it down to this shape right there. So uh, that's just kind of an op some options right there. You also have things that you can, um, like creating an array of selected objects. So this would be good if you had multiple things that you wanted to engrave or um, cut out of a piece of material and just want to um, put them in an array. Um, if you wanted to put them in a circular array, you would use this and you basically highlight all of your objects and then click that tool right there. Um, moving along, you also have um, a thing called set shape start point, which I haven't used before. Um, and then uh, there's this other one, click corners to round them. So there's those options right there. So moving along up to here, you can actually see um, these values up here if we click on this circular uh, object again. So it'll show us the X position in millimeters as well as the Y position of the object itself, um, as well as the width and height of the object. I'm going to delete that real quick and we'll just move up over here. So you got your basic um, new open save tools. Uh, this one is an import, so you'd use that to import images, whatever else image uh, elements you want to put into your uh, project. Um, there's an undo and a redo, a copy, cut, paste, delete. So that would just be deleting different elements of your design. This is a um, pan drag view option. You got your zoom in, zoom out. You got your zoom to frame selection. So say we wanted to zoom out like that. I'll click zoom to frame selection and it's actually going to zoom into um, really closely into our project file. And one thing to note too is that um, this boundary area right there, that's actually the um, in the X and Y dimensions of how big um, the laser is. So it is uh, 600 millimeters going this way by 400 millimeters going this way. So that's it's a pretty decently sized area um, that can um, accommodate a range of uh, like woods and other acrylics and materials that are kind of larger size. So moving along, you also have the option to do things like um, update uh, the background from your camera if you have a camera connected to your laser, which we actually do. It's um, connected to uh, basically the um, the window of the laser that lifts up. I have it attached to that. So basically when, if we clicked on this and we had the um, laser uh, window open, essentially, um, it would take a photo of what is on um, the laser bed, which I'll, as I'll show you, it's really handy for any objects that you've already placed onto the laser bed. You can actually just um, use that tool to take a photo of the background of this and say if you had a bunch of pieces of plywood or like acrylic set up you could actually take your design elements and just um, make those over the part of the image since it, it's basically taking an image a, a snapshot of all of the material that's on the bed right now so it, it really makes um, laying out your projects super easy which I will show you here in a bit and then as you saw, this is the preview tool up here, which is really handy. You know, it gives you, you can actually watch a play-by-play -play, uh, playback of um, how the machine is doing its cuts and etches like that. Um, and then it's what's really nice is it gives you that estimated time right there. And then over here, we've got basic settings. These are things that um, have already been set up uh, from the factory for the laser, so it's nothing we ever need to mess with. So I'm not gonna go over those, but over here we've got a group tool, an ungroup tool. So that's for grouping different elements, text or um, 
different shapes, whatever, grouping them or, or ungrouping them. Then you've got basically, these are your um, a set of alignment tools. So you can essentially uh, mirror selections vertically, um, horizontally, uh, align selected objects vertically, align them horizontally, etc., or distribute the selected objects horizontally or vertically. So that's super helpful if you have multiple elements in your design that you want to basically have nicely um, aligned to your um, whatever stock material that you're using to either etch or cut into. So as we had gone over this cuts and layers tool before, and I'm actually what I'm going to do is click up here and you'll actually see um, the cuts and layers tool, depending on what, if you ha are using a larger monitor, um, you will see these. And so on the computer that runs the um, laser itself, a desktop computer, you will actually see these little tabs right there. So right now we're in the cuts and layers um, tool tab. And as you had seen before, essentially with the cuts and layers tab, any new um, design element that you add in, um, you want to create a new layer for that. So I'm gonna click this again. So I'm working on a laptop right now, so it's to bring this back up. So let's say I wanna do another layer to my project. So I'm gonna click on um, this layer two. I'm gonna choose, let's say we want to do a uh, polygon tool right there. Um, let's say we wanna make a little offset polygon like this. Um, it's not gonna look great, but this is just an example. So right now it's gonna be a line cut. So it's actually going to be cutting through the material itself. We can actually see <clears throat> what that looks like if we click there and then we'll click on the um, preview function right there. So that's actually gonna cut that shape out as well if we add that. And as you can see, um, the speed is 100 and the power um, is actually at 20. So we'd probably want to increase that if we wanted to cut um, this shape out of the uh, this circular um, material stock that we cut out from the larger stock. So if we didn't increase the power, basically, if we keep it at 20%, that's just going to basically etch this line into uh, the material. So if we change this over to fill, you can see what that's going to look like by clicking on preview. And so that's actually going to, going to obscure <clears throat> our MPL um, signage or text because it's basically going to um, engrave that shape onto the material itself and it shows you right there it's actually going to up the time to 10 minutes and six seconds because it's going to be etching in a great or engraving into um, this material that shape so I'm going to click up over here again and you'll actually see we'll, so we'll move along from the cuts and layers area um, and now we can click over to the move tab essentially what this does is when this um, when the laser is connected to this software, you can jog um, the laser around in the X, Y, and uh, Z parameters. This homes the laser head itself. Um, you can get things like the position, you can increase the distance and speed values right there. Uh, if you click over to file list, um, any sorts of uh, designs that you create that you want to upload, it will show right there. Um, I don't use this very often, but I do use this um, area right here. So anytime I have um, my design set up and I'm ready to go and I have the um, I'm connected to the desktop computer that's connected to the laser itself I'll always once I'm all ready to go I will click the start button and that actually sends the job itself via USB cable um, to the laser itself so you actually don't have to um, do anything say like put it on a USB stick and then uh, open the job up on the laser interface. You can actually do um, set your job up here as well as send your job via U a USB cable uh, through this software, which is really cool and handy. Next thing is camera control, and since I'm not connected to the laser right now and it's not turned on, you won't see anything right now, but I'll show you um, in just a bit here uh, what what this is all about. What's nice is basically um, when this is on and we choose the, the light burn camera, um, we will basically get a picture, an overlay, um, top down view of the laser bed itself. And that's, like I had mentioned, super handy for setting up, say if you wanted to have a bunch of smaller pieces of plywood um, etched into, which that's one of the um, things that we'll go over today as far as the projects I'm gonna make um, basically 
light engravings on some circular um, pieces of plywood of the uh, new MPL logo. So what's really nice is the camera camera control. I basically will show you how you can set up pieces of plywood and um, you can do update, click on update overlay and that's actually going to show you a screenshot or it'll take a picture of what is on the bed and it, the, the uh, overlay, it'll overlay that picture itself onto this bed right here. And then what's really nice is then you can just essentially um, put whatever design element you want um, over the image that it took and you will have like really good accuracy in terms of um, where that um, the engraving or cutting is gonna go. So those are the major tools that you'll use uh, in Lightburn. Um, so when we do do any projects on the laser, um, we'll be using uh, most aspects of all of these tools. And especially the <clears throat> in the cuts layers area over here, um, things like the speed and power will be, um, you can play around with those depending on whatever material you have. Once we are connected to the laser itself and we do a couple of uh, example uh, projects, um, there's this option right here. It's, it's not, uh, won't come up for me now because I'm not connected to the laser, but if I click on library, which I'll show you in a later part of the video, um, that essentially brings up a list of different materials that um, the company Thunder Laser has tested and the values for that for cutting and engraving. So it, that's really handy for that this materials library because it really helps narrow down the uh, speed and power settings because they're all basically set by the, the um, laser company itself. So it really kind of gives you a nice starting point for um, your whatever project, uh, laser project you want to run on materials such as like acrylic plywood or say if you want to um, engrave on glass or uh, mark on metal. So that's it for now for learning Lightburn. Uh, in the next section of the video we will go over a few example projects and you will actually get to see the laser itself uh, in action doing some engraving and cutting. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part of the video. All right, we're back, and so I'm in the library right now, and I'm we are connected to the laser itself. And as you can see, um, under camera control, that is the view from the camera um, pointing down onto the laser bed. And what I did was I just clicked Update Overlay, and what that does is it actually just takes a picture of the bed of the laser. And as you can see, I set up my uh, piece of thin plywood and these little clips um, that are holding it uh, in place were 3D printed. So now what we want to do is just bring in um, the MPL logo to put onto this piece of plywood to engrave onto it. And then I'm going to actually take this, uh, the circle ellipse tool and make a circle around this in order to have the last part of the um, laser job cut all the way through uh, this to make a circle. All right, so our next step now is to import uh, the MPL logo image. So how you do that in Lightburn is you click on File, go up to Import. I'm going to find the MPL logo that we created. That was actually, we took it from a um, PNG file and I converted it to uh, a scalable vector graphics file. So I'll click on Open and it opens down here. And I just use my selection tool up there and move this up here. And what I can do if I wanna to try to get this sort of square in the middle is I could create a square like this and then use, um, basically go up here, highlight these both and use these uh, align and distribute tools. So align them vert uh, vertically, click that line vertical center, that'll do it like that. So um, since I'm actually going to be using a circle though, I'm not going to, I'm probably going to change um, where this is located at. But that just kind of shows you how you can use the, the um, align tools to align to your piece of material. So right now we'll just take a preview of what this is going to look like. I'm just going to click up on the preview button right now. As you can see, what it's going to do is it's going to engrave um, these parts of the MPL logo plus the text into that piece of plywood. And it's going to take a total estimated time of 6 minutes and 35 seconds. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go over the cuts and layers tab over here. And what we're going to do 
I think actually the, the power setting is just right. Um, we don't want to go higher than that because we would be basically engraving deeper into the plywood, which we don't really want to go too deep into it. We just kind of want to do a nice surface engrave um, just to burn a little, like the logo, just slightly into the um, stock material itself. So we're good to go on that. So the next thing we'll do is we want to go over and we're going to grab this ellipse tool and I'm going to make basically just like a circle in this area right here. I think what I'm going to do, click that selection tool, I'm going to click shift on my keyboard, try to keep it proportionally set up so the proportions of this circle are kind of kept intact. Um, and what I want to do is actually make it a bit smaller like that. Let's see. It looks like actually I was wrong. Um, the control button helps keep the proportions um, of this circle. So I'm going to kind of move this around, move this uh, whoops, over to the side a little bit, just like that, just so it's like in the middle of this material. Um, now what I want to do is I actually want to resize the logo as well. So I believe if I do control, yeah, that'll save it proportionally like that. Um, so now what I want to do, so this looks good, the circle looks good to me. Now I just want to make sure that the logo is basically kind of in the middle of this circle. So I'm going to highlight both of these. Go up to these uh, options up here. So we got the align vertical center. Click like that. And I'm going to go to the align horizontal center. Click like that. So that looks uh, a lot better. So. That should actually work and we'll go up to preview click preview and so what that's gonna do we actually don't want that we could do that if we wanted but I actually want want to have this be a uh, line cut I don't want this part to be engraved and then this white part to be left so we will what we'll do and I actually just realized how I made that mistake is I'm gonna take this I'm going to move this over here, and I want to actually assign this to a different layer. So I'm going to assign it to layer 1, or C01, like that. And so you saw it was turned into a different layer, and now it's like a blue circle. And what I want to do is, it actually did it for me, it changed it to a line. So then what I'm going to want to do is just kind of move this over again. I'm just going to use the align um, tools again to try to make it look nice. So I'm going to highlight these both, do this align vertical center that looks good align horizontal center that looks good to me right there so now if we click up to the preview right here so what it's going to do is it's going to do the um, engraving and then the last part of uh, the job it's going to do the line cut of this to cut it out and I think what I want to do is actually um, use the library, um, the materials library, um, to basically um, make sure that my line cut is how I want it to be. So I'm going to go down here, choose on choose plywood. I believe the thickness it's closer to two millimeters. So what you can do is you click on that, and so that's the cut function right there. And what you can do is actually. Um, the values there you can just assign to a layer which I'm going to assign to that so I'll click on that and you can see uh, that changed the speed is going to be uh, 50 millimeters per second and the power is going to be 60 and now if we go up to the preview we'll click on this and you can actually see so now it's going to have yeah the last part of this um, engraving cut is it's going to be cutting that line shape or this circular shape out of that material um, and then the majority of the time what it's going to be doing is going to be engraving into um, the plywood the logo all right so we are actually ready to run our first job so I'm gonna click on okay right the, right here I'm gonna move over to laser and uh, I don't have the machine on right now because it's actually pretty noisy when it's turned on because um, there's a water chiller and a compressor um, connected to it and it's just it, it does get a little noisy and the mic this microphone I'm using picks up on that so I'm gonna turn it on in a second but basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna click the start button that's gonna send this job over to laser and I'm gonna switch over to um, 
another camera view and uh, top-down camera view of this job running. So stay tuned. Thanks. All right, so this is the example of the MPL logo that got engraved into, into the piece of plywood and then cut out out of the plywood itself. It turned out pretty well. I did notice, I think my engraving settings were just a little too high in terms of power. Um, you can definitely tell that it got burnt into the material a little bit more than um, I kind of wanted, but um, it looks good so far. So this um, works for me. Hopefully it gives you a good idea of uh, working with plywood and kind of how simple it is to import a scalable vector graphic file into Lightburn and then uh, use the shapes tools in there to actually cut out a shape around uh, the image itself. Okay, so for this next uh, section for our next product, I'm going to take um, an MPL uh, Makerspace logo that one of my old volunteers made, a fellow named Michael Hughes, who's down in I think Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, we're going to import that logo uh, into Lightburn. We're going to have it engraved on this um, piece of, it's I think like a darker black uh, piece of acrylic. It's kind of shiny. Um, and then actually have uh, the circular part of the logo be cut out from that. So here we go. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go up to File and I want to import that image. So we'll find it. It is, let's see, Makerspace logo by Michael Hughes. So we'll open that in here. And as you can see, it's imported already. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just zoom in and I actually wanna try to fit this logo into this little space. I think I believe it's about three inches. I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the Cuts and Layers tab. And so we already have it set as a fill tab and I'm gonna check out the engraving settings that Thunder Laser recommends and it looks like it's 450 millimeters by, um, for speed with a power of 20. Um, so that we're actually good to go on that. So we can click preview and see that it's actually going to engrave all of this into the acrylic. It's gonna take about a minute and 54 seconds. So the next thing we want to do is I actually want to create a circle that's going to be around this logo that's going to be cut out. Um, this circle is going to basically uh, be the last thing that we'll do. It's going to cut this out and so we'll have um, the logo uh, engraved on this piece of acrylic uh, and a circular um, basically cut out from the acrylic itself. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to click on control while I'm clicking down. I'm just going to make, and actually the first thing I want to do, um, I'm just going to delete these first, whoops, is we want to click on this and see what the size, width, and height is. So I want to basically make my circle around the same as this. So I can have it as a width of, let's do 70, and then maybe a height of 65 for this circle. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to choose after I click that, I'm going to choose this as the second layer, since it's going to be the cutting layer. Um, choose this circle. We're going to do 70 millimeters by 65. Hit enter. We're going to grab this. Oops, just made another circle. So I'm going to do control Z. I'm going to do the select tool right here and grab that. Move this over here like this. So you know, it looks like it's still, it's not quite big enough. So I'm gonna click control on my uh, keyboard. Bring this out just like that, proportionally. <clears throat> so that's looking a lot better. What I can do now too is uh, I wanna basically try to align these. So I'm gonna highlight these both. 
I'm going to choose the um, tool align vertical center as well as the tool align horizontal center. So that looks pretty good. Essentially what this is going to then be is if we click preview, essentially it's going to engrave it first and then the last action it's going to cut out um, this circle shape from the acrylic. And we'll look over at our line values and I'm checking the uh, 60 watt laser parameters from Thunder Laser and it looks like we're actually right on the mark is that for acrylic that's it's about 2.7 millimeters thick you want the speed at 14 millimeters per second and then the power really high at 90 to cut all the way through so we should actually be good to go on that alright so I'm gonna make sure everything is good to go and then uh, we will watch this get engraved and cut out Alright, so this is how the MPL Makerspace logo turned out, um, getting engraved on acrylic as well as getting cut out of the material itself. It turned out really, really well. Um, the engraving, as you can see, it just looks really, really nice and it didn't go in too deep in the material. And all I really had to do after it was done was uh, just wash it under some water and then wipe it down. And it kind of, it just basically left this really nice uh, engraved um, sort of look onto the material itself. So that turned out really well. Alright, so for the last project we're going to do as part of this tutorial, I thought it would be cool to uh, test out some of the new uh, functions for importing pictures into Lightburn and uh, getting those pictures to engrave onto material. Um, so I thought for this one it would be great to um, make a little personalized thing for my wife using a picture of me and my cat, just as, as an example. Um, so as you can see on the um, bed of the laser itself, I actually have, it's a piece of plywood that's cut out in a heart shape. I found these online, I think it was eBay or Amazon somewhere, where they're already cut out. So um, we don't have to do anything in terms of like cutting out the shape, but what I'm going to basically do is import the image, um, make sure that the settings for engraving that image are going to look right, and then I'm going to add some text on top of that. All right, so the first thing we want to do is actually get the image into Lightburn. So if you go up to File, Import, and then it's this image right there, Iron Jack. So it's going to import pretty big. I'm going to click Control on my keyboard and click right there and just proportionally scale it down a little bit. It looks like it flipped. Whoops up and down but so I'm gonna go like that and what's cool about this new version of Lightburn is that you can click on this and then uh, right click and there's an option called um, adjust image and this will actually show you um, so this is the original image on the left and the image on the right is uh, whatever image mode that we're in in terms of uh, what the laser is going to be um, engraving at. So I found Jarvis is pretty good. Um, Jarvis, Stucky, and Dither are kind of the standard ones that I've researched in terms of um, good quality for engraving photos. Uh, but I'll kind of just go through a few of these and show you how they look. So if we chose threshold, you can see it's basically going to have this huge contrast to the image itself. Uh, if we went get down to ordered, that looks a little bit better. Um, Atkinson, that's looking a little better too. We've got Dither, Stucky, and Jarvis. They kind of look the same. Um, then we go down to newsprint. You can see that it kind of looks like newsprint. Uh, halftone is even now more distorted. Um, sketch, and then grayscale. Um, so in my research I found that 
Some of the really good settings are these three, um, Dither, Stucky, and Jarvis. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to choose Jarvis. For the DPI, the max dots per inch you can do uh, on this 60 watt machine is 500. So I'm going to change that from 498 to 500. And as you can see, if I'm at 50, it looks all pixelated. So I'm going to go to 500. Um, and then line interval looks pretty good. Let's see. We don't want it to be a negative image like that. Um, so what we'll do is click on OK. And uh, then up here, we just want to make sure our speed and power settings are uh, good to go. So I'm going to double click that. And yeah, that looks really good for the settings that I um, have been researching. Um, we're going to slow the speed down. We're going to make the max power only 17% and the minimum power 15. We're going to have the air assist um, off the high one, and we're going to go for the low air assist. All right, so this is looking good. So then all we just need to do is hit uh, click OK and then we can preview what this is going to look like and it's uh, just going to look like a big black block I'll show you click on preview and so what's it's going to give you a better idea of what it's going to look like if we actually zoom in on the image and so as you can see so that's me that's our cat um, and what's essentially going to happen with the laser is that at certain points it's not going to be shooting um, its beam onto the um, plywood at all it's just gonna leave that as is but all these little areas right there that's the um, laser beam itself actually shooting into the material so it's it's kind of it's this is the the way that it can translate a picture to um, being laser engraved is by basically it's gonna be you know shooting its um, pul or pulsing the laser on the material and then certain parts like right there where it's white it's not going to shut off just briefly for a couple sec like milliseconds as we can actually see it's going to take about six minutes and 55 seconds so it's going to take a little bit longer because i'm actually decreased the speed um, of this because and some of the settings that i read is you want to go a little bit slower when you're engraving a photo so the next thing i want to do i'm going to add a little text to this at the top so I'm going to go over to the text tool right there, click that. I'm going to choose a font from here. Let's see. Maybe I'll just choose Constantia. And so then what I'm going to do is click where I want to start writing, like that. And then I'm going to come up with a phrase. And since, um, you know, it's a picture of uh, me and my cat, I mean my wife's cat, and we've got a heart that it's going to be engraved on. I want to write something a little cute um, for her. So I think I'm going to write in, let's see, whoops, in our hearts forever. Um, and what I want to do actually is that's, you know, it's, it's not going to fit um, onto this. So I just need to go up here to the height and make this smaller. Move over here, grab this tool right there. Move it like that, move it like that. I'm gonna click Control, and then I'm just gonna grab that right there and move up like that. So it actually proportionally gets smaller, and so it will fit um, in this area right there. And it looks like the settings uh, for it, it's a line cut at uh, really high power and low speed. I don't actually want this text to be um, cutting all the way through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the speed to 200. I'm going to take the max power down to, let's say, let's do 15 and 15. I basically just want to do an engraving um, of those letters on, on this heart. So uh, we can click up here on preview and see what that's going to look like. So essentially what's going to happen is uh, the first thing, it's going to engrave that photo and then it's going to do the text um, on the top of this heart part. So I'm going to click on OK and uh, this looks good. Um, this should turn out fine, I believe. I tested out the settings before and this actually, um, the power um, settings to engrave the picture seem to work really well in terms of quality as good as you can get for using just a photo so um, we're gonna move over to the laser and uh, I'm gonna record uh, how this goes
Thanks. Actually, what I decided to do too is to change um, this layer to a fill. So it's basically going to make an engraving instead of a line um, etch into this material. So if we go up to preview, we'll be able to see it's gonna. These letters are gonna be all the way. Um, etched in or engraved into the material instead of just the outline of it. And then below that will be the image. And it'll take about seven minutes and 46 seconds. And for the final uh, project, this is how the um, engraving worked out on this piece of plywood that I'm dedicating to my wife. It's um, our cat and me. And uh, I did change the text um, for for this project and, so, and stuff. So um, yeah, it just changed slightly. As you can kind of see, I burnt into the material just a little bit more than I thought I was going to. So I could probably next time around just um, go down with the power settings, maybe a percent or half of, half of a percent in order to not make it um, burn it or engrave too much into the material. But um, it did work really well and I was happy I could show you guys an example of bringing in your own JPEG image into the library and software and actually getting it to engrave um, that image onto uh, material like plywood. That concludes the tutorial today of um, how to use the laser cutter engraver for various projects, importing images into the Lightburn software and then actually getting things to be able to get cut out of materials like plywood or acrylic. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I'm going to put a um, my email at the bottom of this video, so if you want to contact me um, for more information, um, you can do that. Um, and just to give you a heads up, in case you've seen it, we are opening for limited hours um, starting Monday, May 3rd from 9 to 12 p.m. Uh, check our website at missoulapubliclibrary.org for more details uh, or the specifics on that. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.